Welcome back guys, first I'd like to express my gratitude to everyone and their great comments from the previous video and their contributions to the channel thus far. Fresh off the press, more amazing Hacking Time Discord work in the making. The Hacking Time team has two big names in the tech space joined as admins on the Discord. We are now four strong and this combination of lads creates such a diverse range of knowledge in one space. The subs are truly blessed. Now we have Uber Z, myself, I am Jacoby and Skeleton Man all up in the flex. With these powerhouses on board, we can not only take the Flipper Zero work to the next level, but also unleash these guys' knowledge to a vast array of topics within the Discord. To name a few, we're doing CERT work, CCNA, Azure, ISO, Kali Linux and so much more. In other news, following the positive feedback I received from our recent bad USB video, many people have asked about the reverse shell, what it is and how it works. So today we're going to investigate how command and control frameworks or offensive tooling might be able to circumvent, evade and get past Microsoft's native AV Windows Defender. So buckle up, turn up those speakers and let's go. go, go. Now the reverse shell is a type of virtual shell command line that is launched from the victim's computer to connect to the attacker's computer. Once the connection is established, the attacker can send commands to the victim's computer and receive data back. The attacker in this instance then has the same privileges as the current logged in user who initiated the connection when executing any command or program on the victim's computer. Reverse shell connections are typically established using the TCP UDP protocol, but they have also been observed using the IMCP protocol. The connection can be established via any port, for example on port 80 or 443. Because they are usually left open by default, firewalls and other network perimeter security solutions find it difficult to detect and block them. And what don't help is when network content is encrypted when it uses port 443 which is SSL and this makes it even harder to inspect the traffic. Many different built-in system applications such as Bash, Telnet, Netcat, Perl Script, Python Script, PHP, PowerShell and many others can be used to initiate a reverse shell connection from a victim's computer. As long as the attacker has access to the victim's computer, the connection can be initiated by a standalone script or embedded program. However, cyber criminals can use them to execute operating system commands on hosts that are protected from incoming connections by a firewall or other network security systems. As a result, Reverse Shell is an excellent choice for an attacker looking to install a backdoor on a compromised computer. For example, malware installed on a local workstation through a phishing email, malicious website, or as we've seen previously, the bad BUSB, may initiate an outgoing connection to a command server. Because firewalls primarily filter incoming traffic, an outgoing connection to a listening server is more likely to succeed, which makes this threat type very dangerous. Now we're not going to dive too much into this but it's an important point to bring up when we're talking about reverse shells. So at a high level let's consider AMSI as a bridge that connects PowerShell to the antivirus software on the host machine. Every command or script we run within PowerShell is fetched by AMSI and sent to the installed antivirus software for inspection. If a signature in that script is registered by the AMSI anti-malware service provider, in this case Windows Defender, initially it will be blocked. Malware creators are constantly looking for ways to avoid this type of detection from their target's defenses. Obfuscation and patching AMSI deals in memory are two of the most common methods used for bypassing AMSI. These and other techniques can make it more difficult for antivirus software to determine the intent of the payload. To find out more about malware development and theory, sign up to the boy Cosmodian's course and learn some crazy sh**. Today's tool created by Andre34Z has five features that makes installing and configuring a reverse shell that much easier. Shells boast the following. Show username at computer directory above the prompt and a working directory. Partial AMSI bypass, making red teaming activity that much easier. Uses TCP and UDP based protocols. Uses Windows PowerShell and Core PowerShell. And also uses uploading and downloading files via Updog by Scott Free. All right, now we can go back into what used to be my Kali Linux box. And I want to give a huge shout out to Hacking Time member Simo for helping us both create a Kali slash Mac mashup. I'm starting to actually like it, weirdly enough. So. 
bring up a terminal and we can go into our desktop and then we can paste the git clone for shells right now we have shells installed so we could just cd into the shells directory and now we're in shells we have an install shell read me some screenshots and shell itself so let's run the install shell that is done and now we should be able just to run shells itself so now we're in shells we have what looks like 14 options including uh running the updog server so let's run updog And then it's asking me to please enter the updoc directory. We can leave it as the default, which is sitting on a desktop. We'll leave the default at port 80. And now we have a listening port on port 80 inside the shells folder on the desktop. Okay, so that'll be here in this top level one. Now we have updoc running we can begin our reverse shell so the type of shell we want in this use case is a power shell now it's asking for the listening ip uh so this is going to be the ip in which we're going to listen on incoming connections so if we go to if config and then we can see here it's already the ip address of this kali machine so we will hit enter as hitting the default. We'll leave 443 as the secure port for HTTPS. So our traffic is encrypted. That is fine with me. Now we have a format for IP. We'll leave it as a baseline 32 format. And now we have 18 options with a combination of TCP and UDP as core options. Now we have ranging from Windows to core URL encoding but in this scenario we will be happy with just a Windows option I can explore this more later on of course so we go for option one I'm happy for the default uploads for updog that's fine well wow. now we have an interesting output here as well as some listening options uh, so we can have a listener on RL wrap on NC. We could just have a normal NC listener and open SSL listener. So we get at least three options in terms of what type of listener we want as well. Now we get this kind of obfuscated code. I did mention this earlier about this being detected and whether Windows Defender can even detect these sorts of attacks. Now it's running some sort of PowerShell in hidden mode under no profile execution policy there's a bypass and there's a no exit which means the code will continue now it says here the following has been copied to your clipboard already so we'll take this because this obfuscation is actually sitting within a base 64 so this is a binary that's hiding the true nature of this code so we can copy this we could try and unpack it or decode it before we actually use it uh yeah because i want to see what's under the hood here so if we paste this into a g edit and we can save it in the desktop as we call it ace dot b 64 and we save that now what we want to do get another terminal going and we will run the base 64 command with a dash d and we will target this payload let's get into the directory that the payload exists in first would help and then we'll go to base 64 tack d with that file that we just created for the base 64 and we hit enter it's showing me already what's behind the scenes here so let's copy this so we'll start visual code and start a text file paste that in
and it's already picked up the language as being PowerShell, which is fantastic. So let's see what this is kind of doing. Now we have the code in its true nature within Visual Code. We can see exactly what's going on. Now I want to give a big shout out to Jacoby on this because he actually helped me decode what's going on behind the scenes here because this is a bit beyond my own PowerShell knowledge. So Jacoby informed me that this is not only setting up a reverse shell, which allows the attacker to remotely execute commands on the host machine. There's also an upload function that appears to allow the attacker to upload files from the host machine to a specific destination and then download them. So this is the updog feature. And it's also pointing to the IP and port number that we initially set up as well, which is here, if you remember, it was the 145 and the port 443 for a new TCP client. Very clever stuff, very, very interesting. I would like to see how this actually runs. So, we have that and we know what's behind this code right now. So, now we have our RL wrap NC active and we're listening on port 443. The way we actually get this running on the host machine we will copy all of this content now we can go into the host machine and before we do so again we want to verify that windows defender is active and everything is on so as you can see it has windows defender active it has real-time protection active and might as well put cloud-based protection on as well. <laughs> so let's see what this code can do once it's in. So the way this deploys, according to the documentation, you copy this code and then it has to be run within command line. And then once we hit enter, it should be game over. As you just saw, the command line disappeared, but what ran was the code that we earlier examined. So what was that done on the attacking machine? And it's game over. That easy, that is scary as hell, and it's just done it. And let's see, if Windows Defender's done anything. Nope. Windows Defender hasn't seen anything at all. It just let that pass by. And as you can see here, I have a shell. So if I hit LS, uh, say if I can even change directory into desktop. And I hit another LS. There you go. There's the Sun Tzu exploit that I did earlier. There's the job bat, there's settings. Uh, if I go just to verify here, you've got the Sun Tzu, the settings, there's a PDF file. Just to ring this home, if we run. So if we run Notepad, we can see here that Notepad ran without any issue. And we can fire commands as and when we want. So if that Sun Tzu file, we could just open it up. And there you have it. We're reading the art of war like nothing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I really, really like this one. It's slick, slick as hell the way it deployed as well. Hats off to um, Andre or Andreas 34Z. Amazing work. If you want to comment below, Andreas, and you see this video, definitely leave a comment. Explain a bit more from your perspective how the code, especially that obfuscated code, is it working? I would love to know more about that from you. Now, after seeing that, you have a right to be worried. And in general terms, there's no complete way to prevent a reverse shell once it's successful. However, I would also suggest monitoring all outgoing traffic for potential shell commands. So 
to do this if we head over to the victim's machine in this case now if we open an application called seaports and i'll give a link in the description below for this and we run it what i like about seaports is that it shows you which ports are active and which ports have addresses port numbers their port name their remote addresses everything it shows you everything what is state is the process path it's on huge granular information for all incoming outgoing port discovery for your discretion so in this instance we know that the attack that we had at hand was listening on a certain port so if we scroll up a bit we can see here on 45 and from 144 so if we go back here we can see on the ip addresses if there's anything matching that criteria so if also remember on the if config here we are on 45 so is there anything connecting to 45 that's the first thing there we go right there you can see here under the protocol tcp there's a local port opened here and it even tells you this port here this 50610 we found it here this 50610 port and it's an established connection make sure you're aware of the sort of ports that and unusual processes or application activity on your machine if you're ever worried about any outgoing connections uh, very good and very handy to have this one in so today's topic was on shells and how powerful and user friendly this application really is for red teamers this will 100% be discussed further within the hacking time discord i can assure you i'd like to thank once again jacoby for his help in understanding the power shell under the hood of this bad boy it was incredible to learn more things from him do make sure to check out his channel for more in-depth guides in the world of powershell and ethical hacking the link to the hacking time discord will be in the description below remember to leave positive comments below and if you can join the hacking time discord and stay safe in the cyberspace peace out